The DevExpress layout control for Silverlight includes a number of powerful runtime customization features that enable you to provide your end users with the same unmatched layout modification tools that you use at design time. In this video, we'll take a look at how to build a layout, how to customize it at runtime, and finally, how to save and load that layout. I'll start with a new Silverlight application project. From the toolbox, I'll drag and drop a layout control onto the page. I'll set it to fill the entire available area. I'll go ahead and set up the basic layout required to enable runtime customization as well as provide the layout persistence functionality. I'll add three buttons. The first two buttons will be used to save and load the layout control. The third button will enable or disable customization mode at runtime. Now I need to add another layout control. This one will be used to build the actual layout and demonstrate the runtime customization features. I'll set the orientation of the parent layout to vertical and set the second layout control to stretch and fill the remaining available area on the page. Now let's create a sample layout. I'll start by adding three text editor controls. You can see that powerful design time customization can be used to position items. Next, I'll add a layout group and set it to stretch horizontally. I'll add a few more editor controls inside the layout group. Let's go ahead and add a second group. I populate it with four editors. You can see that I can easily move these controls within the layout group control. I'll rearrange it so that two groups are formed, each containing two editor controls. These are invisible groups and are used for organizational and positioning purposes. You can see two controls are grouped by the thin light blue box encompassing them. I can switch this group to a tab view by right-clicking it and selecting tabs from the Context Menus Views submenu. Notice that each group was split into a separate tab, and I'm done with the basic layout, so let's go ahead and add the necessary code to persist the layout and enable customization at runtime. I'll click on each of the buttons to create a handler for the click events. In the click event of the customization mode button, I'll first check to see if customization is already enabled. If so, then the property is set to false to disable it. Otherwise, runtime customization is enabled by setting the is customization property of the second layout control to true. Next, I'll add references to the system.xml and system.io assemblies. These are needed for the layout persistence operations. For the first button, I'll add the following code to allow the end user to browse and save the layout as an XML file. The second button will contain code to browse for an existing saved layout and load it into the second layout control. And I'm done. Let's run the application to see it in action. And here it is. You can see the layout I built on the bottom. However, by default, nothing can be moved or customized. I'll click on the Customization Mode button and Runtime Customization is enabled on the second layout control. 
This is indicated by the red outline around the control. I can select groups or individual items. I can select a tab and rename the tab headers. So let's go ahead and rename both of these tabs. This is not limited to tabs. Other layout items can be renamed as well. The order of tabs can be changed, and I can add a new tab at runtime. Let's drag a new item into it. If I select an item and remove it, you'll notice that it ends up in the available items list on the left. Through this panel, you can also add the ability to create new items at runtime. I'll go ahead and add a new group box and a new tab control. Notice that if I remove one of the newly added items, I can dispose of it completely by clicking the small X button next to its name within the Available Items panel. Let's further customize the layout and add the layout item to the new tab control. That looks good enough, so let's save this layout. I click the button and specify a name for the XML file. Once saved, I open the XML file to see its content. You can see that it contains a human readable markup representing our customized layout. I'll go back and refresh the Silverlight application to reset the customized layout. So now that we are back to the original layout, I can use the load button to select and load the previously saved layout into the control. And here it is. The layout was customized at runtime, successfully persisted, and finally loaded back into the application. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.